All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Coach Dan Gordon, who is just up the coast in, in Los Angeles. How are you doing? I am. Hey, John. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I, I love what love what you're about. And uh, I just checked out Pipeliner recently. It's a really cool app. I love it. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, we're 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 growing. It's uh, we get great customer feedback. We've got great long-term customers, so it's been it's been going really well. But uh, so let's uh, so so just to give you a little bit of background on on Coach Dan. Um, in 19, in 2016, you you made a mistake that destroyed your marketing company and cost you over 80 grand, which is whoa. And and you were standing at a crossroads in your life, and then you chose a bold new direction and. Within what eight months later, you walked on stage being paid 10 grand for your first professional speaking gig. And today you 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 uh, take entrepreneurs on a, on a journey of bold transformation to uh, to to expand their income, become powerful leaders, enjoy life to the fullest. If you want to, to experience living life unlimited, then we're going to want to listen to Coach Dan. Boy, so, John, uh, that, that that's such a beautiful introduction. It's almost like, I don't know, I wrote it myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like I read it too. But anyway, <laughs> but let's let's start off. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of people have have had circumstances like yours, maybe not exactly the same, clearly, but yeah. had circumstances where they have some major setback in life, and it could really kind of destroy their confidence mm. and sort of send them in a tailspin, or just kind of stop them dead in their tracks, and they never yeah. really do anything again. So, tell me a little bit about. When that happened to you, how did you ultimately go, okay, this is terrible, but I need to move beyond it? That's, wow, oh, I really appreciate that that question. Um, so the first thing I did was I had an emotional breakdown, <laughs> uh, but literally on the floor in snot and tears. And I, you know, I talk about it now in, in sort of lightly, mm -hmm. but it was rough. Like it was yeah. really bad. And so the one of the things that I learned from that is that's part of the game. Like if you're going to be an entrepreneur and really um, put forth an effort to make a big splash in the world, one of those things is going to happen to you. Maybe not at that level, but something like that will. Right? This is this is not for the faint of heart. And I mm -hmm. and I tell people that I tell people that I coach that just to be clear that if you're looking for safety, this is the wrong thing to do. Right? If you like, if you're like someone who likes things that are predictable, do not be an entrepreneur. Run, get a nine to five job. It's fine. A lot of people do that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make a splash in the world, like if you want to have an impact on a lot of people's lives, this is the way it's done. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to answer your your question, um, the one of the first things I did is I reached out to a friend. Right. And this is key. This is a lot of things a lot of entrepreneurs don't do. They don't ask for help. And for, for me, I had to get to the end of my rope to, before I asked for I asked for help. And so I, I called up a friend and I said, what am I going to do? I laugh now. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, what do you want to do? And that was a really important question because at the time I was running a marketing company and I was running a marketing company because I'm really good at marketing. Right. But I hate it. Like I hate marketing. I'm just good at it. Right. And so this is important because you don't want to do something that isn't core to who you are as a person in the world. You don't want to do something just because you're good at it. Right? Uh, yeah. And I, I I love that point you made there because it's uh, there's a couple of things I just want to pick up on. Number one, you're right. You can be really good at something, but not it brings you zero satisfaction doing it. Uh, and the other thing too, that you, you just said there about reaching out, because I think some people, some people think that the entrepreneurial journey is a solo journey and you, you, know, you <laughs> go out on your own and you do it on your own and all of this. And the point that you raised there about reaching out to people from the get go, I think that's a really important one. It is. And, you know, in this country, we have this stupid idea of this one person victory, you know, and we really like that. You know, we like this this narrative that, you know, this person did this great thing and they did it on the, on their own. Nothing great has ever happened alone. Nothing. You know, um, I, I had the uh, 
had the pleasure of interviewing uh, Richard Branson's business partner, a man by the name of Phil Cuadroero, mm -hmm. who unfortunately just died. But he talked about Branson in terms of the fact that, and to be clear, uh, so Phil and Branson uh, created Virgin Records. Yep. And Branson was a guy who, he just had a record store in London, like he wasn't anything, you know? Yep. And he took this huge risk. And what he did is he enrolled Phil who was a record per producer making um, what would be now like over a million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And he essentially said, hey, quit that job, come and work with me, uh, and let's start a record label that the most likely thing is failure. <laughs> and the reason that Phil said yes is because Branton was so passionate about this thing that he said, I couldn't say no. He right. said, maybe I would, you know, maybe I was, and he said that, the person who had hired him was like, what are you doing, Phil? You have this great job. And, and, and he said, yeah, but if I do, I do this, I'm going to make an impact. I'm going to do right. something that never been done. Yeah. And so I, I'm saying this because this is a part of it. Like losing everything was because I went all in on something and losing everything is because I, my heart wasn't in it. Mm -hmm. And if you, you have to look at things this way. Anything, any result that you have, you created. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. not someone else's fault. It's not bad luck. It's not the universe. It's you. <laughs> right. So when I went back and I looked at this, the mistake that I made is I hired a guy who turned out to be a pathological liar. Oh. And what happened is I ignored all the red flags, right? right because right, he right. seemed like he really knew what he was talking about because he's a pathological liar. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got completely sucked into his lies. Mm. And, and I, uh, he became very entrenched in closing new business and made a lot of promises about things that were just impossible. I'm mm. like, are you sure you can do these things? And it goes, mm. oh yeah, I do it all, all the time. It was a lie, <laughs> right? It's but so I was, I was so entrenched in this ego-driven idea of being the successful businessman, mm -hmm. and that's what happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so the way that I came back from it was when my friend said, "What do you want to do?" And I said, "Look, I want to do what I've been successful at." all of my professional career. And that has been in the changing people's lives business. Mm. Cause I, I used to teach personal development courses yeah. and I was really good at it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I was using that, but I was afraid to do it full time. Right. Right. And so when that happened, I said, okay, I'm going to be a business coach. I don't know who's going to hire a business coach who just failed at business, but screw it. I'm going to try anyway. Right. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, uh, coach Dan, um, a, a colleague I worked with a, a number of years ago, uh, he was friends with a very, very successful, really, really top successful uh, business person. And uh, he had two, uh, this guy had two things hanging on his wall. One was his Harvard MBA and one was his first chapter 11. And, uh, <laughs> and my friend asked him one time, he goes, which of those did you learn more from? And he just laughed and he would just pointed at the chapter 11 and said, oh, that one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, look, uh, this is this is a bit controversial, but if you're in college now, quit and take the money that you are spending in college and start a business. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, if that's look, if you want to be a brain surgeon, stay in college. Uh, <laughs> if you want to be an entrepreneur, get out. It's sure. it is the biggest scam in the world. Mm -hmm. These people who are teaching you have no idea. Look, I I uh, I did really well in marketing. You know, I, I took marketing classes. Yeah. And I failed um, my exams, but I got an A in the marketing lab because I understood how to take a product and market it. But right. taking tests, I suck at. Right? <laughs> so college is designed to test you on how well you are at taking tests. It's a terrible. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So uh, the, the other one thing I just yeah. want to pick up on, because please, uh, please. As, you said, as you said about uh, where you decide you were really in the business of changing lives. And you, you mentioned Richard Branson. I just, just as an aside, please, yeah. as a young kid growing up in Ireland, like was yeah. really into when punk music and that came along, changed my life. People, I mean, I just said, it changed my life. Sorry. People don't really get that when I tell them, but it did. Cause it changed no, my, mindset, yeah. my yeah. mindset. But we used to, whenever we used to go over to London, uh, you know, in the, in the early eighties or whatever, it's, we, 
the pilgrimage always to Virgin Records. Always, mm. to, you know, the original store that had originally just been upstairs and had been their yeah. mail order place and then became a, but yeah, it was, uh, but think about, to your point, for us, it was a pilgrimage. It wasn't mm. just going to a record store. It was an actual pilgrimage. Yeah, because like, well, what made it a pilgrim? Like, what did he do that other people weren't doing? Um, because he was signing, he was signing the bands that other people wouldn't touch. They had a total, even, even in those days, even calling it Virgin Records was controversial. <laughs> you know, I mean, right. seriously, like yeah. back to, you know, oh, back to yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. I, and it was, it was because he was signing bands that other people wouldn't touch and yeah. he was going into the subculture, you know, which was the punk subculture at the time. And he was associating himself with that and the, the rebel and the outsider and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know boo to corporate you know emi and all of that uh, yeah. to the big ones and that was it and that resonated with us so that was it you know we were you just went there to be there and to hang out with the other people in in that record store uh, i love it i love it and look anything that you do is going to be scary like i'm, mm -hmm. I'm scared every day and if i'm not scared it means i'm not doing something new right look mm -hmm. i'm i'm launching um a program called no douchebag selling which is an infinitely scalable sales training program because i don't just want to work with people one-on-one -on -one. i want to mm -hmm. scale up and I'm starting, uh, there's two other things i'm working on and they're they're huge and they're expensive and i have no idea if they're going to work but the, but fortunately I've, I've already lost everything. Like I know what that's like, right? Right. You know, I burned myself on the stove. I'm not afraid to cook something. Right. Cause it, right. And so that's why you have to invest in courage. You have mm. to work on um, eliminating the stories like, well, I need to know more or I'm not ready yet. And, and I refer to it as the gap. Right. right. The gap is where you are as opposed to where you want to be. And it's this chasm and you have to jump that gap. Right. And it's scary. Mm -hmm. But once you do it once, it gets easier and easier. And so I um, uh, kind of de um, constructed how I did this. And I wrote a book called Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story and mm -hmm. Take Action. And I'd like to give it to your audience. May I give it oh, away for perfect. free? Excellent. Okay. And, and and this isn't a thing where you go and the book is free, but then you have to pay for something else. It's not. It's just a free freaking book, right? So to get it, <laughs> just text the word GAP, G-A-P, to this number, 213-409-8366. 213-409-8366. And text the word GAP, G-A-P, 213-409-8366. And download this, this, this book. And people have told me it has really helped them eliminate these stories that keep them from taking action and that's what i i love about the book yeah and and we'll uh, we'll include that uh, oh, in, the show, in the show notes for sure but there's a couple of things there i mean i think uh, i wanted to pick up on as well number one you could have easily have come out of that original experience and just mistrusted everybody just said okay <laughs> you know, the world is full of you know people who are going to rip you off yeah uh, but clearly you didn't because you're in the you're in the business of helping people and helping people find themselves and fulfillment and all of that. So it must have taken a conscious decision on your behalf not to let that experience and that person kind of poison you going forward. It did. And and I'll tell you, the the journey of going from the floor, you know, that <laughs> stop, chairs on the floor to the stage um, was a journey of massive transformation. And that's, that's what I'm in the business in. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be in that business. And let me tell you something, the best way to be in the business of transformation is to get great at selling. And I know that it's, but the thing about selling is this, anything that you struggle with in life shows up in a sales interaction. And am, am I right about that, John? Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Right. So your sense of value, your sense of money, your sense of uh, how much, of faith you have in yourself, your ability to connect and be compassionate with other people all shows up in a sales interaction. And that's why I'm launching um, this program is because I want to help people sell authentically. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole thing, this Sandler sales method, this the opens and the closes, it's, it's all a bunch of bullshit, right? You like, we're in a day and age where you have to reach out to people authentically. And can, and uh, I'd, I'd like to give you like just, 
Yeah. Um, four simple words. Yes. Four simple words that can change any sales interaction. All right. Someone's talking to you or you're talking to someone about uh, a product or service and they say something like, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. right? We've all heard that. Right. Yep. Instead of going into, into um, product benefits and features, trying to convince them intellectually, start with these four words. Hey, I get it. Mm -hmm. Someone says, look, uh, it's just too expensive. I can't afford it. Hey, I get it. I, I know that. I know that feeling. I know the feeling of wanting to buy something and not being able to afford it. It feels terrible. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I hate that feeling. But would it be okay if we talked about why it still is super valuable? Like, would that be okay if we had that conversation, mm -hmm. even though you can't afford it, right? So what I just did there is the first thing I did is I connected with them where they are. Yeah, yeah. It's a bad feeling to say I can't afford it. It's embarrassing. Yeah. You know, like I'm, when. Uh, you know, ahead, I'm just going to say, Dan, no, I, I yeah. think it's a great point. And I think oftentimes, I'm I 100% on the authenticity piece. The only thing, uh, I, I love the way it's become a buzzword for a lot of people now. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, going to teach you uh, how to be authentic. And you're uh, like, no, 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 no. I can't even teach you to be authentic. What are you talking about? Right. But, but the, the other part there is, is sometimes in sales, we just, uh, people would overlook the fact that there is a lot of emotion on the other side, right? There's, I always say like, if you're in B2B selling, the per, you know, the people you're working with, you know, the, 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 the prospects, maybe the person you're working, this could be a career enhancing thing they do if they buy your product, but if it doesn't work out, could be career limiting. So there's not just professional, there's also a lot of personal emotion tied up. Mm -hmm. in it. And if you don't acknowledge that, um, you know, you get derailed fast. Yeah. And I love that, that you said that because it is all emotion and mm -hmm. you have to deal with your emotion, your, your feeling of scarcity, right? And the best way to overcome the feeling of scarcity, because this is what scarcity drives you to do. Gee, how do I close this person? How do I get them to, to buy this? You know, mm -hmm. I've been said like Mick Jagger at the height of his career, never worried about getting a date, right? <laughs> He's never like, oh gee, I hope I can find someone to go out with this center, right? Because he had, you know, there were a lot of people that wanted to go out with him, right? So that was never a concern. If you never have a concern about having enough prospects, then you don't fall into scarcity. Then when someone says no, you're like, oh, yeah, fine, good, right? And the best way to not have scarcity is to get um, is to get involved with Pipeliner, right? <laughs> having, I mean this, like I, I talk to my clients about having a pipeline all the time and I checked out your system and it's really good, right? If I didn't already have something, I'd be on it. But um, having a pipeline when you look at your pipeline every day and you see all these people that you're talking to and your pipeline is going to show you where you are in all those different conversations, right? I get up in the morning, I look at my pipeline, like, oh, I'm talking with Steve today. You know, last time I talked with Steve, we were talking about this. Oh, I'm talking with, with Mary. This is our first, con this is our first conversation, right? Going into the conversation, knowing where you left off the conversation allows you to keep moving it forward. And mm -hmm. if you're relying on your memory, you're screwed. It's yeah. never going to work. <laughs> You've got to use a really great pipeline um, to keep all that information right in front of you. Because when you pick up the conversation where you left off, people really feel that you're, you're concerned about them. Right. Yeah. They know that you're not going into the conversation going, let's see, where did we leave off? <laughs> right? like, yeah. And there's no, there's nothing more validating than that, is there? Goes, <laughs> right. Like, who are you again? <laughs> yeah, who are you, and you, can you, can you, you don't mind reminding me where we are in my sales oh. process. <laughs> oh. Right. That that is the height of um, insincerity. Mm -hmm. Right. If you want to show somebody that you genuinely care who they are, that you are genuinely interested in helping them, then you damn well better show them that you put some time into remembering what they're struggling with. Yeah. And those are the questions. Like, do not be so uh, so attached to your product or service that you just want to ram it down their throat about how great it is. Talk to them about what they're struggling with. Yeah. And if your product or service can't 
uh, relieve their struggle, that's fine. Fix it for them anyway. Right. Connect it, connect them up with someone who can help them. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't tell you the number of times I have solved people's problems in my first phone call with them. And, and people say to me, well, if, if you solve their problem, why are they going to hire you? And I say back, have you ever met anybody with one problem? <laughs> Excellent. Right. Yeah, uh, no, I think that's such a that's such a super point because yeah, because we're we're so, in many ways we're we're so disposable these days. Like we just walk on, like oh that's done, move on, move on. Everything is disposable. But to your point, is that 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 relationship building part that just that connecting uh, connecting on a on a human level that that empathetic and and the only way you will do that is by having genuine conversations and curiosity. Because if you're if you're if you have no curiosity, you're never going to really dig down yeah. and have a, have a really good investigative conversation, or you're never and, and the other person's going to know that you don't really care. Yeah, right. You're, you're just going to keep getting back to your features and benefits, mm -hmm. and they, it's you know if if most people sold, or if most people dated the way that most people sold, this is how that date would go. Hi, my name's Dan. You want to go back to my place? Right? <laughs> Or, or it would go like this. Um, well, here, let's. I drive a Tesla. I yeah. make this amount. Um, this is why I'm really good uh, as husband material. Um, <laughs> I have some references of some other women that I dated. <laughs> if, right? Like, I, you know, the woman would, would be sitting there going, hey, it'd be really great if you asked me a question about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ab absolutely. So, um, so uh, Coach Dan, as, as we head towards the end of the year, yeah. It typically is a time when people start reevaluating their lives and all of that. For some reason, uh, we always sort of feel like we have to. And now we're in a, we're in an in a time when a lot more people are trying to go out on their own because you know mm. they perceive it as being a lot easier now. You know, <laughs> being, able to, being able to remote work and this that, and the other. And oh yeah, that. yeah. Oh, so if, if there's if there are some people sitting there and they're going through this you know end of year evaluation and they're thinking about going out and going, what, what was the what's one piece of advice you would give them? Don't. <laughs> Don't be an entrepreneur. And if right now my saying that <clears throat> sways you, you are not an entrepreneur. Ah. <laughs> if I can, can, if some guy that you started listening to 22 minutes ago um, can convince you not to be an entrepreneur, then you are not cut out for, for, for this. But here's the thing. If you want to live a life <clears throat> of passion and impact, this is the only game in town. You're not going to do that being a, a middle manager somewhere. Uh, yeah, look, you can you can make a huge impact on the people who work for you, um, who work around you. That's great, but it's limited. Mm -hmm. And unless you want to be, you know, a, a surgeon, a lawyer, like the you know things, you know, an electrician. These are things you just can't wake up and be. You know, you'll kill somebody. <laughs> But if you want to do something that makes a big impact, and not just that, but it's it's really exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when I was suffering, and it was real live suffering, like it was. I mean, I was I was looking at being homeless, you know, mm. and, and it was suffering. I, there was still a part of me going, "This is kind of cool." <laughs> like, you know, like this, <laughs> it's it's painful, but. Uh, this is this is the kind of stuff that one day I'm going to be talking to somebody about and go, hey, let me tell you what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a, a guy that I interviewed. Uh, I'm, can I plug my show? Would that be okay? Yeah, of course. Okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. It's called for 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 badass entrepreneurs only. And if you don't want me to plug it, you can just cut no, this out. No, 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 um, no, no, no. Feel okay. free. Uh, so uh, do a search for, for 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 badass entrepreneurs only or for badassentrepreneursonly.com. You can find the show. But I interviewed this guy, Glenn Stearns, from Stearns Lending, who was on this show called um, The Undercover Billionaire. Mm -hmm. And on this, like he was literally scrubbing toilets on this show, the billionaire guy. Like it's a cool show. And I said, didn't you think like, what am I doing here? And and he goes, no, this is the most this is the most exciting part of the journey, right? Because this is the part that when I get successful, I'll tell people about. Right. And so to answer your question, John, 
if you're going to do this thing, you have to understand that you're going to feel bad. Mm. And if you're if you're not into feeling bad, then you really shouldn't do this. <laughs> right? If you're worried that having bad feelings means that you failed or something, then you shouldn't do this. But if if you have an idea and you're like, you know, I really want to test myself and see where I can get with this idea and see what kind of people I can influence and see what kind of impact I can make. And start looking around at the world and think of things differently, right? This is so exciting. And by the way, if you want my help, like book a call with me. Yeah. I mean, I, like the, the, that same number, 213-409-8366, um, text the word help to, to that number as well as Gab. And you can book a call with me. Mm. I won't try to sign me up to be a client. You're probably <laughs> not a good client. You probably can't afford me. Um, <laughs> but I'll talk with you for 15 minutes and give you some ideas. Yeah. Well, listen, it's fantastic. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, Coach Dan. And uh, hey, you'd be mad not to take Dan up on his offer of the A, the book and B, the uh, the 15 minutes, particularly if this is what if this is what you are considering. Uh, obviously, learning learning from people with experience is always a much better way of doing it than just like experiencing. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I had had a coach, I would not have. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it all worked out for the best. And I got to say, check out Pipeliner. It's a really good uh, platform. I, I, I really highly endorse it. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Well, listen, thanks again, Coach Dan. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon.